Have you ever felt lost in a sea of information while reading a novel? Or perhaps bored with too many details dumped on you all at once? Well, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, transforming, basically taking exposition and turning it into true storytelling uh, as we dive into the art of exposition and how to seamlessly uh, incorporate it into your novel. So why is that important, Thomas? Well, mastering exposition is crucial because it shapes how readers perceive your story. Done well, it enriches the narrative. Done poorly, it can distract and detract from the experience. But Thomas, what is exposition? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's why we're doing this lesson. Simply put, exposition is the way you provide your readers with the background information they need to understand the plot, characters, and setting of your narrative. Think of it as setting the stage for your narrative or context. Exposition can include details about the world your story takes place in, the history of your characters, or any past events that are crucial to the current storyline. However, the challenge isn't just what information to give, but how to give it without bogging down your narrative. Done right, exposition can be woven into your narrative so subtly that the reader hardly notices they're being fed important details. So today uh, we're basically going to go, or we're going to learn exactly how to do that. I will be giving a physical real-time example of how to acknowledge something being exposition, how to seed that exposition, and ultimately how to move that exposition in. But before we always jump into the physical, I like to give some tips so we understand what we're jumping into. So tip one, avoid information overload. The short of it, too much exposition can slow down your narrative's pace and disengage your readers. Now, it's about finding a right balance. Simple, right to the point. But let's talk about the long of it. Excess exposition can bog down the pace of your narrative and alienate your readers, turning an engaging plot into a tedious lecture. To maintain interest, it's crucial to distribute information judiciously. All right, this means giving out only as much information as is necessary at any given point in the narrative. Think critically about what the reader needs to know to understand and appreciate the current scene or plot development. Consider if the detail ex enhances the screen or merely pads it. I'll repeat that because of my voice. Consider if the detail enhances the scene or merely pads it. Okay, always aim to keep the narrative moving forward using exposition to add depth only when it enhances the emotional or dramatic stakes of the narrative. Uh, to cap on that, uh, or to add on that, um, when you add exposition or you feel there's important information to add context to the story, remember there is information for you, meaning you as the author go, I want the reader to know this because I have a deep, relationship with the story and the characters and if they just knew this little thing they would think it's really cool too for that for that character and because i know it's cool however they don't understand the depth and emotional bias that has been put into the history the writer has with that character and that story so sometimes just telling somebody something doesn't necessarily build an emotional connection with the audience they have to sort of develop a discovery to that information or watch it play out or learn through emotional response from the characters of how important that information is, okay? The other thing is exposition can be uh, contextual, okay? This is when it's just enough information to make the emotional uh, element poignant, to give value to what is going on, why it's going on, and who, who it's going on to. So those are two variations of exposition there's the i want the audience to know and then there's the audience needs to know for context okay so keep that in mind tip number two the short of it seeding exposition the short of it is gradually seed important information uh be it background or 
you know, world building, etc. across several chapters. This helps maintain narrative flow and enhances reader discovery. But what's the long of it? Well, by seeding, which is a technique where you sprinkle essential pieces of information gradually throughout your narrative, it will lead to uh, basically this method prevents overwhelming the reader with a flood of details at once and encourages more of an interactive and engaging reading experience. By distributing exposition across several chapters, you allow readers to assemble the background story and world details bit by bit. This enhances their sense of discovery and investment in the story. This approach also mimics how we naturally learn about the world and the people around us, not all at once, but in pieces as we go along, which feels more organic and believable. To add to that, I would like to just say that sometimes when we dump a lot of exposition down, we realize that we could actually break that up and make it go backwards a few chapters and make it go forward a few chapters and it'll have a stronger payoff. Because you also have to remember, especially if you're writing epic fantasy, if you have 70 chapters or 60 chapters or even 50 chapters, if you exposition dump in chapter five and that pays off in chapter 25, that's 20 chapters where the audience probably has forgotten about that chunk of exposition. But if you continue to seed bits and pieces of that exposition and keep bringing the audience back to it, even with a line, a statement, an idea, maybe a visual, you're allowing them to maintain a familiarity with it and it sticks with them and the landing hits a little harder emotionally and it pays off. Which brings us to number three show, Sometimes Tell. Okay, I don't believe in that show, Don't Tell. You have to tell sometimes for context. And the short of it is, whenever possible, demonstrate exposition through character interactions and actions rather than straightforward narrative exposition. Uh, that just means instead of just telling the audience background information or exposition for context, allow the characters to move through it or physically show it through the scene. Um, quick example is... Uh, if the city is uh, been taken over by aliens, just show the city overrun by aliens. You don't have to tell anyone. You just show aliens in the city and people hiding to avoid the aliens. And that is a form of exposition. We now know the state of the city. There's, you don't even need a narration going, the city has been taken over for the last five years, and through those years, the people have become... Uh, dangerously suspicious of all activity and hide in the trenches like rats. You can take that exposition and break that up and just spread that out through. We can learn over time that it's been five years. We can learn over time, you know, the 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 state of being, okay? That's sort of what happens in Terminator. If you ever watch Terminator, they don't tell you everything right away. But there is a moment where Reese does tell the story, but there are clues leading up to that story. So there's enough seeding to allow that story to have an emotional depth to it. And we now it makes sense that we're hearing from his position, which is the show. We're seeing it through his experience and his emotional story, uh, which I believe does that lead to lead to the love scene? Or I think it comes close to that, but it's not just, you need to know this it's, it's through the character. Anyway, the long of it, when it comes to show sometimes tell is, Instead of directly telling readers background information or descriptive details, find ways to show this information through the actions and interactions of your characters. For example, instead of stating that a character is anxious, you might show them pacing, fidgeting, or stutter stu stuttering like that during a conversation. This method not only keeps the narr narrative engaging, but also deepens the reader's connection to the characters by revealing their personality and reaction. It turns static information into dynamic scenes that readers can visualize and relate to, making the narrative more memorable. And finally, for integration is key. Now, the short of it, Weave exposition into the fabric of your narrative. Let characters learn and reveal crucial information through their experiences and dialogues, making the exposition a natural part of the story. 
When I say exposition, I mean uh, exposition. experiences, it means that the characters are living through moments. So uh, they are physically doing something emotionally, uh, spiritually, or literally physical. And uh, But it's through their personal experience. The long of it, if we're going to break it down, is effective exposition is woven seamlessly into the fabric of the narrative rather than existing as isolated chunks of information. Oh. This can be achieved by having characters discover information through natural interactions or within the context of the narrative's action. For instance, background information about a mysterious character could be revealed through a conversation overheard by the protagonist rather than straightforward description. By integrating exposition into dialogues, uh, thoughts and events within the narrative, you ensure you ensure that it serves a dual purpose, enhancing both character development and plot progression. This approach makes the narrative feel more fluid and the exposition less conspicuous. All right. Before we get to the real time examples, if you haven't done so already, uh, please subscribe, like, comment, and share the video, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out especially if you've been enjoying the videos and you just haven't done it already. Okay, walk through time. Boop. Writing exposition. Okay. Writing exposition. Dun, 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 dun. Writing exposition. There it is. I wrote exposition. Oh, wait, wait. Expo. X. Got to look at the keyboard a little bit for that one. Exposition. I wrote it. We wrote. We're writing exposition. Okay, that's a terrible joke. We just look. I'm not saying you have to be here for my jokes, Ooh. but I am. All right. Okay. So exposition. This is writing exposition. Okay. So let's say we're in a scene and it's like uh, uh, Ellen has been trapped. Here for several days with water running low as she hides from the monster hunting uh, what is left of her people outside. Her fear is radiating from the essence of her soul and her mind cannot focus as she deals with the death of her uh, best friend, David. All right. Boop. Boop. All right. So let's read that again. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, Ellen. Ellen has been trapped here for several days with water running low as she hides from the monster, hunting the, what is left of her people outside. Her fears radiating from the essence of her soul and her mind cannot focus as she deals with the death of her best friend. Now, a couple of things here before we really get into it. I'd like to point out, I could make this pretty. Uh, you know, I could be like... Uh, <sighs> her flush skin uh, gave way to... Ellen's reality that she's she, okay. give reality 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 reality. Oh, no, I know I spelled that right. What? Uh, her flush skin, uh, her flush skin, uh, and stank, stank. Uh, pulse pulsing from her sweaty body gave way to Ellen's reality. I don't know why it's saying, uh, to the re to the reality of Ellen's circumstances. All right, okay. Every great writer has a great editor. All right. Her flushed skin and stank pulse, uh, stank. I don't, I don't like, uh, I like it like that. All right. Her flushed skin and stank pulsed from her sweaty body. 
giving way to the reality of Ellen's circumstances. Now, it's pretty, it's uh, immersive, but it's still exposition, okay? Even though we are showing stuff, right? This giving way to her reality can work because it is um, through the experience of the character now, right? Uh, but because it is in the chunk, this chunk, we are making it an exposition. It's a dump. It's an exposition dump. Okay. So first and foremost, what are things we have to realize in this? That's what we have to do first. We have to break down what it is that is the exposition. So let me uh, let me get rid of me so you can see the whole thing. All right. Uh, so right off the bat, we want to, this line is just whatever it is. Okay. So, uh, she's been trapped. This is the most, she's been trapped here for several days without water, uh, without, uh, with water running low as she hides from the monster hunting. Okay. That, I mean, this is, this is 100% exposition, right? Uh, her fear is radiating from the essence of her soul and her mind cannot focus uh, as she deals with, okay, so uh, her mind can't focus as she deals with it. Okay, and then we know that she's stinky because of her circumstances. All right, so there's I just made three sentences to make that one passage or that mo one prose, and we realize it's just a chunk, a chunk of exposition. So that means we have to do the second part, which is seeding exposition we have to figure out ways to seed this exposition the first thing i would do is if i was going to start my chapter off with this and let's say it was the first chapter i already know that i don't want to do this i know that i have to create the essence of the illusion right um so let's let's just focus on this let's do this let's go down do 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 all right her flush skin and stank pulsed from her sweaty body okay and scattered around the debris of the area running Cross the forest floor on her hands and knees. Okay. Now, this is just the opening line, right? So, uh, do we need this part? I don't think so. I don't think we need that right now. I might put this in chapter two. Okay. And, uh, and I might put this in chapter three. Or... Yeah, because because uh, if this is the exposition, then we're going to rely on that. We're not going to do any flashbacks. However, we could later on, though. Like, we don't want to do it right away, right? So we can actually mention that uh, he died, but I wouldn't do it right now in Chapter 1. But mentioning it, talking about it, you know, uh, that's all good stuff. That's all seeding. And then eventually, maybe like four or five chapters in, um, or even the twist, you know, in Act 1, there's the twist. In the twist, we could see how David died, and it would show something about the monster that would also indicate the new world, right? It would help us push into the new world and also say that maybe there's a chance, um, you know, in the flashback, she realizes that, oh, the monster didn't, uh, um, wait a second. so what I'm saying is, like, in the flashback, because we seeded up to the flashback that he had died. She's just thinking about it again. And then she realizes the monster wasn't doing a specific thing. Well, they were coming after her and her friend and it realizes, Oh, there's something the monster is afraid of. And that becomes the, the lie that she believes because in the midpoint conflict, now the whole first half of the second act, she could be going to get this thing. And then when she gets it, she realizes the monster's actually not afraid of it. It was something else that the monster was afraid of. Okay? So th those are nice little, like, uh, seeding twists that allows us to make exposition a little bit more interesting. But let's let's keep going. Right? 
So, all right. So I open it up with her flush skin and stank pulsed from her sweaty body. Ellen scattered around the debris of the area running across the forest floor on her hands and knees. Each movement. Uh, oh, wait. Leaves stuck to her arm, her exposed arms. Whoa. His arms. Uh, uh, oh, leaves stuck to her exposed arms. Mm, the deeper she uh, moved down the hillside. Oh, the, uh, the, far, the lower. The hillside. Hillside. Right, so leave stuck to her exposed arms. The deeper she moved down the hillside, uh, she flickered at movement. Her mind had uh, burst. Uh, okay, she flickered at that movement. Her mind had birth. Um, concern. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Knocking uh, the leaves from her arms, only to realize it was nothing but her mind uh, teasing at her fear. Okay, so a little fun uh, at the movement of her mind. Okay, so there's a couple of things here that happens, right? So this is definitely. This is this is showing right her flush skin and stank pulse from her sweaty body. So we know she's actively moving, right? We know that some stuff is happening, right? But Ellen scattered around the debris of the area, running across the forest floor on her hands and knees. Okay, and then leaves stuck to right. So this is following, by the way, this is following the the, the narrative thread. So what kind of debris is on her, and she is. And it's the forest floor, so it's leaves stuck to her exposed arms the deeper she moved down the hillside, right? And then she flickered at the movement her mind had birth, knocking the leaves from her arms. So it's saying that she felt the leaves on her arms and she knocked them off, only to realize it was nothing but her mind te teasing at her fear. Okay, so she's nervous and all that stuff. This is probably the only exposition. This is context. This would be context exposition, okay? But now we just seeded that. And then, so that would be chapter one. I, I, would, I would radiate into more of the narrative from this point, not worrying about that chunk of exposition that we came up with, which is these three lines. I have automatically, I've gotten this taken care of. Oof, okay? I got that taken care of. I'd probably expand a little bit on the fear. Uh, I might, I might uh, express sounds right, to show that the monster exists but without showing the monster yet, okay? Um, I might have her uh, find, uh, de you know, bo uh, de destroyed bodies on the ground, okay? And then maybe I would get her into a cabin, right? And then maybe something would happen with the cabin that would end that, uh, that chapter, right? So, which would bring us to this, right? And then what would I call the chapter? Right. So this is a uh, OK. So I might call the second chapter uh, several, several days later or, uh, you know, um, yeah, several days later, because then the chapter gives away exposition. It gives away context. So now I don't have to talk about it being seven days later. But what I can do is I could start exploring this. I could start. I She is trapped. So we could start talking about how she's hiding you know, like by showing her hiding in this this hut, how she boarded up the walls, the doors, the windows. And then I could show her trying to, you know, uh, uh, drink water, but there's almost no water left. So she has like a contraption that catches rainwater, but there's nothing in it yet. It hasn't rained. And she goes, oh, man, I just what I wouldn't do for just, just 10 minutes of rainfall, you know, whatever the case may be. And we start building on that. But we know that. Uh, she's hiding from the monster hunt uh, that is hunting uh, what is left of her people outside. So 
we have to also build that exposition within the second chapter. And I might actually cut to with a hard chapter break to other people, you know, or, um, or maybe she has a, a radio with her and, you know, or something like maybe she's, she sees somebody running outside and she's like, Oh, I, I, I should open the door and go and go help him. He, he's there with me. There with me, you know, um, whatever the case may be. So you can just build on this was this could have been my opening pa passage to the story. But as you can see, I just created a whole chapter idea with just the first sentence. And now we've taken exposition and turned it into a seated event because now I could just build on her circumstances and it might take two or three chapters to be like i am completely in as a reader i understand her circumstances and you didn't have to tell me uh, because if i hear the monster and she can't see the monster i know there's a monster out there all right if she in chapter two if she sees her friends and she saves one of them and the friend is like it got a, it got it got you know uh, marge you know, and uh, and Chris, they're both gone. They're both gone. And we, we, can't, we we're going to die in this thing. And, and she's like, no, we're going to survive. There is exposition. She's she's we're telling you who she is and how she's relating to the circumstances. Yeah, she's fearful. She's nervous. She's concerned. But she has gumption. She has uh, perseverance in her. All right. She's a leader. She's trying to be like, no, together we can do this. And even though this person is scared, the character uh, Ellen is like saying, no, no. I'm going to I'm going to get you out. I'm going to lead you out no matter, you know, even though you're a risk right now because you're scared. People who are scared is a risk. They're not they're not going to, uh, you know, be all all in the head. So anyway. So just to reiterate, writing exposition would be this. This would be if I wrote this out and I looked at it and I was like, wait a minute, that is just right on the nose. I would look at it like I did and break it up. All right. This sentence is exposition. This moment I need to explain this. And I need to explain this. All right. So what I could do is I want to explore this. So I'll explore that in the first chapter. So that's how you break it down. And that's how you get to seeding. But let's talk about seamless exposition. Okay. Seamless exposition. All right. Boom. So let's go back to this. Okay. Do, 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 do. Just as an example, all right, her flush skin and stank pulsed from her sweaty body, giving way to the reality of Ellen's circumstances. So again, this would be the exposition, okay? And this would be, as we would say, uh, the show sometimes tell. So this is showing, all right, oh, all right, I'm, I'm immersed. I, okay, we got touch and we got smell. All right, great. We have two senses in there, okay? But that's also creating a sense of her, her position, her mental and physical position. So she's she's being, before we even get into it, before we even explain what she's doing, we already know that it has to be strenuous. It has to be something that is creating sweat, either from the heat or whatever, but we don't know. But we're discovering it as uh, uh, readers. And then it says giving away giving way to the reality of Ellen's circumstances, which would then internalize it, meaning that we are now seeing there, we are being told something of her circumstances is affecting her to be in a state of fear. Right. Which brings us back to this section. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, -wee. Okay. So uh, she's been trapped here for several days with water running low as she hides from the monster. So again, to seamlessly put this in there, what I would do is uh, the reality of circumstances. Um, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ran shivered. Uh, oh wait, uh, here, here we go. Eh. Eh. All right, she grabbed her second. Her she grabbed her hand, shivering around the bottle uh the empty bottle of water uh the little that remained 
uh, flicked around, falling on her face. Uh, Ellen stuck her finger in the hole. Uh, to grasp any remain any any liquid I held on all right the salt of days on her finger mixed with the water uh coating her hand, her finger her uh, oh, coating her finger as she oh wait, yeah, 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 coating wait, yeah, yeah. the salt of days the salt of days uh raced against her tongue as she consumed her finger mixed with the water coating Coating, uh, coating her attempt at the last of her reserves. I spelt that wrong. Okay. All right. So I'm oh, sorry about that. Okay. So here you go. All right. Now I took this exposition. Okay. There's also more exposition. I'll get there. So she grabbed her hand, shivering around the empty bottle of water. The little that remained flicked, flick flicked around, falling on her face. Ellen stuck her finger in the hall to grasp at any liquid that held on. The salt of days. Okay, that's exposition. Because there it means many days. This is technically exposition. It means that many days have passed. I'm not showing that. I'm just telling you that the salt of days. The days, days have passed. Braced, uh, and, and more importantly, it's connecting to this for days. She has been in the situation which creates the the stank and the flush of her skin and her the reality of her circ her circumstances. And now we're building on that. So uh, braced against her tongue as she consumed her finger mixed with the water coating her attempt at the let at the last of her reserves, which is also exposition. So there you go. I have just put exposition into uh this is a now obviously this is a unworked piece an unworked prose in fact let's boop, you gotta gotta indent um right but as a starting point as a zero draft or a first draft this would be more of a first draft right i'm giving just enough exposition to exp to give context to the audience while immersing them not only in her physical struggle but what is happening Okay, we now know, by the way, we know this. We know that uh, she has been trapped for several days. We got that in there, the salt of days uh, for several days with water running low as she hides from the monster. So we got in the water and the days. So the only thing I got to really get in there is the monster hunting what is left of her people, which we can we can build to that. That could ha we can explain that over the course of the chapter without going right into it. But. This allows enough information to understand what's going on while being able to experience the necessary exposition to get the reader into that room with Ellen. Poor Ellen. All right. I hope that was uh, helpful. Boom. 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 What's next? Oh, question. Okay. Uh, question, how do you handle exposition in your writing? Do you struggle with info dumping? Share your experiences in the comments below. How do you deal with the exposition? Eh? Eh? How do you handle it? Let me know. Let me know. If you haven't done so for, uh, already, but you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more content. Remember to hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. Uh, and really, again, this video, it's going to be out. But uh, uh, just so you know, if, you, if this is your first time seeing it, and I haven't done so already, Live videos will be coming back probably in July. I have been doing backlog videos just so I have my goal is to have at least three or four months filled up. Uh, and then I'll go back to doing live videos because that at least give me a little bit of break. Uh, but of course, all videos get a final thought. And this is my final thought on exposition because it's important to remember that 
exposition is not just about delivering information. It's about enhancing the reader's experience and understanding of your narrative. The key to successful exposition is not in how much information you provide, but in how you integrate that information into your narrative. When done correctly, exposition should feel like a natural part of the narrative's unfolding, enriching the world and deepening the reader's connection to the characters without drawing attention to itself as exposition. Effective exposition should be like the foundation of a house. It is vital, but largely invisible, supporting everything else that's built upon it. It's a balancing act between showing and telling where the goal is to engage the reader's imagination and invite them into the world of your story. Every piece of information you include should serve a purpose, whether it's to advance the plot, develop character, or enhance the thematic depth of your work, uh, as well as world building. If you find yourself struggling with lengthy, lengthy passages of exposition, ask yourself whether each piece of information helps the reader better understand or care about the narrative. If it doesn't, it might be worth reconsidering maybe to not include it or, as we did today, break it up, spread it out, and build on it. Turn the exposition into an experience. As you continue to write and revise your narratives, keep developing your ability to weave exposition seamlessly into the fabric of your narrative. This skill will not only improve the flow and readability of your work, but will also keep your readers invested and eager, eager to turn the page. So take these tips, experiment with them in your writing, and see how they can transform your narrative from good to unforgettable. Next video in this series, we'll go over foreshadowing, how to introduce hints and clues early in the narrative to build anticipation and intrigue for future events. Bear in mind, seeding is not foreshadowing. Seeding is earning the information or the reveal that happens so it's not deus ex magata or it's not just a convenience of narrative. Foreshadowing is providing insight subconsciously or consciously to the things that will happen. I say this all the time when I'm watching a movie or show with people. I go, well, they showed that. Chekhov's gun. They're going to use that. They mentioned XYZ. That's important. All right. So that's what foreshadowing will go over. It'll show how to seamlessly put that into your stories as well as explaining the power of foreshadowing. I basically foreshadowed that video. Okay. Uh, with that, whew, as always, keep developing the right mindset, peace and harmony, truth and action, my friends. I'll see you next time. Bye.